is that neutral not-for-profit member-owned standards development organization um, and we are best known for that providing the system of unique numbers the data carriers so, so the barcodes um, the information sharing standards um, and our core business, we license and allocate and administer this bank of numbers that enable that global unique identification of products and services. Um, so we started actually in the food sector and are involved in every industry sector now as well. And um, my role specifically, as um, we said earlier, is in healthcare. But um, I suppose GS1 standards, um, as a core, they're device and system agnostic. So back to that harmonization and standardization. Um, and at its simplest, it's the barcode. And I like to give that example of imagine going to do your grocery shopping and imagine doing that without barcodes. And more importantly, can you imagine if there was non-standardized numbering systems in place, if you're, somebody was scanning your loaf of bread and then your carton of milk, if people were just applying their own numbers, there would be a chance that information could be stored in a system with the same number. And then that gives knock-on effects on to how to um, pull out that information. So just in summary then, so the, as I said, the GS1 standards allow for that identification through the numbering, the capturing of that information through the barcode on the product, and then that enabling of the sharing of the information. And it's not only just about products, we also look at the identification of people, locations, and assets, and more. And specifically to healthcare, um, this does deliver tangible benefits, such as, um, and you alluded to this earlier, agreed, um, agreed, sorry, the um, effective um, product recalls um, and inventory and payment management. Um, I can talk a little bit about the Scan for Safety initiative later on, if you like. And um, most importantly, at the core of this really is about improving patient safety. Um, and then just more specifically to UDI and how GS1 standards um, can be utilized by manufacturers um, to fulfill the requirements. So. Um, in a nutshell, there's basically three elements to UDI. So it's the identification of your device with that UDI number. Um, there's the placing of that UDI data onto the label or the package um, in a barcode and in the human readable format. And then the submission of that data into the regulated database. Um, so if we take it back a step just to that unique um, device identifier number. Um, so this is, so basically, if you think about what's on the barcode on the product, there's two elements. So there's the device identifier, but then you also have your production identifiers. So your UDI number is what would be identifying the product. And in terms of GS1 standards, this is your GTIN. So it's the fixed portion and it identifies the labeler, the specific version or model of the device. And um, then when you move to your production identifiers, these are the variable portion. So this is where you're looking at um, batch specific information. So your, if a serial number is required, serial number, expiration date, um, the, the batch number, as I said, the data manufacturer um, not required in the EU, I believe, but maybe for other jurisdictions. And this in terms of GS1 standards is um, what is represented by application identifiers and um, these basically are used to store that information in the barcode. Um, another level which um, I know is um, we get a lot of questions with um, uh, personally at GS1 Ireland is um, a difference to the US FDA regulation um, and the UDI requirements there. The EU regulations do require a new um, sort of grouping um, identifier called basic UDI-DI. Um, and this allows for that grouping of medical devices, maybe with similar features um, in the UDMED database. And this is assigned outside of the supply chain. It's um, independent of the packaging. It's never going to be seen on the barcode. Um, but again, this can be assigned under the GS1 system using um, the global model number um, standard. And of course, I know I'm... I'm, I try my best not to use 
too many acronyms, but um, if anybody does require any information on all of that, we are here to help and provide clarification. So um, just to kind of summarize um, this, th those three core steps. So assign your globally unique standardized identifier. Um, so your UDI, DI, um, work out as per the regulations, what you need to put then in terms of your production identifiers. These go in your, um, and I can talk a little bit more about the data carriers compared to the, say the 2D data carriers versus the linear data carriers. Um, but they place that then on the package or label and then submit the required data to the database. And um, I know you alluded to it as well, Greer, that the submission of the data to Udemed is still work in progress. And um, obviously the UDI piece is only a small part of that. So um, I suppose the important message I would say is, um, you know, we are here to help um, anybody who does need some information. Um, on UDI and, um, you know, just to kind of demystify um, what might seem like a, a dark art. Um, it, it's not, um, <laughs> I promise. <laughs>